Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Schwab. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today we're going to talk with Arsen Tavadian, an attorney who has come across the sea from Armenia to Hawaii. Arsen is a partner in the Turtachakian Law Firm and an associate professor at Yerevan State University in Yerevan, Armenia. I've asked Arsen to help us discover Armenia. Okay, welcome, Arsen. It's, it's good to see you. How are you? Aloha, friends. Aloha, Mark. Uh, thank you, fine. I'm enjoying my time in Hawaii, in Oahu. Let me let me ask you first of all. Why are you? I mean, wh what brought you to Hawaii? And yep. then uh, and then I want to ask you a little bit about your practice. And then I want to help ask you to help us discover Armenia. But first of all, why did you come to Hawaii? And what what purpose? What why are you here? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so there is this program by the Department of State of U.S., uh, which is called Professional Fellows (PFP), the abbreviation. Uh, it uh, the intention of this pro is of this program is to bring young professionals from uh, basically the former USSR countries to the corresponding institutions in US and to present uh, basically how the US works. So uh, I was sent to uh I, I participated in this program and was chosen to chosen to come here and my host organization in hawaii is the supreme court of hawaii and my host here is uh associate justice todd Edens, who is a great host and helps me a lot and uh we uh, speak a lot we discuss a lot of issues so that's that's how i ended up here Oh, that that sounds like a great program. And yeah. you are you're you're a lawyer in Armenia. And what 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 is your practice like? What kind of practice do you have? Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, I uh, I am mainly dealing with business law issues and uh, contracts, uh, civil law, tax issues, administration. Uh, is uh, and my practice is. Uh, corresponding with the major branches of Armenian economy. For example, we have wine producing, we have uh, mining, we have IT. So my practice, as I'm dealing mainly with mining, again, uh, wine producing, uh, agriculture, and IT. Well, I mean, that is actually, I've already learned a lot about Armenia I didn't know. But, but let, yeah. me, let, me, let me ask you, I mean, uh, what can you tell us about Armenia? What, how can we discover more about Armenia? Is there, is there an English translation of the name Armenia? And, and where is Armenia? Okay, yeah. so the, the, the term Armenia is not translated, actually. So if we are speaking about Armenia, there is this historical Armenia, uh, which has very complicated and long history, which goes back to a couple of millennia before Christ. So we don't want to dive into that subject. It will take many, many lectures. Uh, but modern Armenia regained its independence after the collapse of Soviet Union in the 1991. And it is a small country situated in a region which is often called Southern Caucasus or Transcaucasus or generally Caucasus. Sometimes Armenia is included in, in the greater Middle East. Uh, but uh, usually it is called, this region is usually called Caucasus. So it's a mountainous region and Armenia is a small country, which is basically situated in the mountains. We have a lot of mountains. I think 85% of our territory are mountains. We don't have access to sea. We are a landlocked country. Uh, only 3 million population there. And uh, Yerevan is the capital of Armenia. Uh, it, uh, I think 1,200,000 people reside there. And uh, that's the general information about Armenia. We, are, uh, we have neighbors, as you see. We have four bordering countries, Azerbaijan on the east, Turkey on the west, Georgia on the north, and Iran on the south. 
Yeah, I want, I'd like to d dive into that in a minute, but I also want to take a look at that first map uh, yeah. that we put up. That that first map, uh, you know, you know what? Do Armenians consider themselves part of Africa, part of Europe, part of Asia, or all of the above? What What can you tell us? I mean, yeah. But when I see <laughs> Armenia, it's right in the middle of everything. Yeah, uh, actually, it's a very very interesting question because. Uh, this region, as I told you some time, is it, it is included to the as a part of Eastern Europe. Sometimes it is considered Asia, sometimes uh, Greater uh, Middle East, certainly not Africa because uh, Africa is quite far from us. Uh, Armenian culture as uh, uh, so it's, it includes a lot of features of uh, European, uh, actually Mediterranean or South European kind of culture, a lot of features of Middle Eastern. And actually, as we were part of Soviet Union for 70 years, we have a lot of things that are coming from this Soviet culture. Uh, uh, I, I, I can't state like that. So it's very hard to say, to tell which which continent Armenia belongs to, especially when you consider there that Europeans or Asians, again, they are very divided and very, very diverse. For example, East Asia and West Asia, they are completely different. And South Europe and North Europe, they are, again, completely different. But Armenia has features of Mediterranean culture, of Middle Eastern culture, of Russian culture, of even France, French culture, because we have a lot of French-Armenian connections. There we are. We have uh, Armenians as a nation have all these things, and we are very diverse but united. Okay. Well, that 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 is a nice comment about your country. Diverse but united. Uh, yeah. That that's great. And and it, and it, and so there is many different cultures, and you, and everybody relates to to all of them. Is that is that correct? We 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 have we all have the features of all cultures, but we also have our unique culture there, which we, we, we have as a nation, uh, we are living in this region for many thousands of years, and we have developed our own culture, which also has features and similarities with our neighboring countries and countries a little bit far from Armenia. Oh, okay, well, let, let's take a look at the, at the second map that came up. Yeah. The, it's a little bit simpler, and you mentioned um, four countries around you, and what are the relationships with those neighboring countries and Armenia? I mean, I mean, we we've heard a lot about Turkey quite quite recently, and Iran, uh, Georgia. We have not heard Azerbaijan. We've heard about, but what what's what's the relationship between your country and these other neighboring countries? Okay, so again, it's, this is a very, uh, very big subject, and we can dive into history. But uh, considering uh, the all the peculiarities of our recent two thousand years of history, I, I just can say that we Armenians uh, have tensions with our eastern neighbors, with Azerbaijanis, and with our western neighbors, Turkey. Uh, and these tensions go back to 100 years, I think, and starting from the Armenian genocide that uh, took place in the beginning of 20th century, uh, we still cannot uh, recover our relations with Turkey. And we have a conflict with Azerbaijan for a region which is called Nagorno-Karabakh or Artsakh in Armenia. It's a region that is populated by Armenians, but Azerbaijan tries to control it. Uh, so that's why we do not have good relations, unfortunately, with our neighbors, with Eastern and Western partners. Uh, with Georgians, we have very good relations. We are culturally very similar nations. Uh, with Iran, again, we also have good relations, and Armenian and Iranian relations go back to thousands of years. Yeah. Okay. Now, you, you've talked about 
uh, and I know I know this is a big subject. Can you give me just um, a kind of a short, <laughs> maybe that's unfair to ask, but a short idea of Armenia's cultural background and how it came into existence as a as a country uh, historically? Okay, so uh, Armenia is one of the cradles of Middle Eastern culture. Uh, this, uh, uh, when you consider starting the history, starting from the Neolithic period, where the, where the people uh, domesticated animals and domesticated crops, Armenia was one of the regions that this happens. So, and um, we have very uh, ancient uh, proto states here, uh, which are called differently. In Hittite uh, sources, uh, our states are called Hayasa, Azzi. Uh, in Assyrian sources, there are Armenia or Urartu. Uh, so basically, the name of Armenia, uh, this region uh, gained the name of Armenia starting from uh, 6th century BC. But though this term Armenia was Armenia was used with a couple of other terms uh, by Assyrians and Hittites starting from the 3rd century BC. So the first state in the territory of Armenia is called Urartu, and it existed starting from the 9th century BC. Uh, some of the sources uh, use Urartu and Armenia as a synonyms, especially there is this Behistun inscription in Iran, which was made in the 6th century BC, where Urartu and Armenia are used as synonyms. And basically, the statehood in this territory dates back to the 9th century. So, and Armenia was a kingdom from starting from the 9th century till the 5th century uh, AD, when we lost our independence, then regained it in the 9th century till the 14th century, we had the kingdom in the, uh, what is modern day Turkey, in Kilikia, in the southern Turkey. Then uh, a lot of nomad people came, Turks, Mongols, Seljuks, and we lost our independence and regained it in the 1918. And we had a very tragical page in our history, the Armenian genocide that took place at the beginning of the 20th century. And up to one and a half Armenians were massacred by the Ottoman Turks. Uh, and one it, and a half million? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And wow. it's a very tragic page in our history. And But after that, Armenia managed to regain its independence in 1980. In, 19, in the end of 1920s, Soviet army... Uh, Game. So they took control of Armenia, and Armenia became one of the founding republics of uh, Union of Soviet Socialistic Republics. And after the collapse of Soviet Union in 1991, we again regained our independence, and we are a republic which has the modern Armenian Republic has a history of 20, 32 years, starting from 1991. So the the Turkish uh, massacre of Armenians is what still brings a division between those your two countries, and uh, that continues until this day. The historical uh, background from that is is that right? Is that a yes? Correct? Yes, yes. And I want to state that Turkey still denies the fact of these massacres. Uh, it uh, calls uh, this genocide as a tragic event, but uh, does not want to uh, face with the facts there. But majority of uh, countries in the world has recognized this fact as a genocide. Uh, U.S., Russia, France, I think Germany has recognized the fact that in the beginning of 20th century, up to one and a half Armenians were massacred uh, by the Turkish authorities. Ah, and, and that is an issue that is unresolved. 
Yeah, to this day. I see, and it continues. Now, I mean, the, the, his, the, the history of Armenia, as you've described it, I mean, it's um, freedom, and then someone takes over. Yeah. And freedom, then someone takes over, and, and you know, including the, the um, Soviet Union. Now, what, what is the relationship now? I mean, now we're in, involved with Ukraine, uh, and is that an issue uh, for Armenia? What is what is Armenia's relationship with Russia now? And is there a, a concern? Is, is what is the position of Armenia with respect to Ukraine? So that's kind of two questions. Uh, Armenia. So we have our own uh, conflict in Armenia, as I've told you. The conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, and it's the main thing that we are now trying to resolve. Uh, of course, uh, Ukraine conflict is a tragedy for Armenians because uh, we consider ourselves both as a nation which are very close both to Russians and to Ukrainians historically. Okay. So, yeah, we we as a nation want these two countries to find a peace amongst themselves. But again, one of the major issue in Armenia is a conflict, a very, very bloody conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, which is continuing, started from 1988. And the latest, uh, so it's, it's a, it's now a conflict that it's not in an active phase, but the latest active clashes were there in it took place in 2020, where it's and when we lost up to 4,000 victims there. And uh, so we have our own conflict, which we try to resolve, hoping uh, again that we will find peace with our neighbors, and hoping that again the peace with our neighboring nations. Uh, will occur and Ukraine and Russia could, could reach to a peace agreement with, amongst themselves. So I hear you telling me that um, there are current problems currently existing yeah. in Armenia. Yeah, yeah. The things are, are not, not uh, always peaceful. Yes. Uh, there are some problems that still exist after all these years and, and Armenia is still trying to deal with them. Um, what, what, you know, can you tell me what kind of a government you have in our, our Armenia? What's it like, to, you know, it maybe give us some comparison with other countries, including the United yeah. States? So uh, actually we have a parliamentary system. Uh, yeah. It means that we choose only the MPs, the members of the parliament. And Armenia, uh, the government system of Armenia is very like to Germany, Italy, uh, England, the United Kingdom. Of course, we don't have a queen or king, uh, but uh, we elect a parliament and parliament appoints a prime minister. We have a president, which is again elected by the parliament, but president is a nominally head of state and it doesn't have any authority and is very similar to UK, United Kingdom's Queen, uh, which is a nominal state of state without any authorities. Uh, yeah, if you know about the government system in Germany, you will, uh, it will be very easy for you to understand how the government of Armenia works. So, so it's the parliament has the power. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the parliament has the power. And and the prime minister, what is the, is that a powerful position or is yes. that uh, yeah? Oh, yeah, I see. Yeah. And yeah, that's very powerful. Yeah, because the prime minister is usually a person who is the leader of the party who holds the majority in the parliament. So basically, a prime minister is a person who is the head of the government, the jure, and de facto the head of the parliamentary majority. So it's a quite a powerful figure there. Yeah. Okay, and and the people get to choose. Yeah, of course, of course. And so it's a it's a democratic, as we would consider in America, a democratic. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we are very proud of that because uh, if you 
uh, look through all the, uh, there are a lot of reports and ratings about the democracy, democracy index, anti-corruption index, and Armenia is one of the leaders in this region. Of course, we have many mm. problems as a new emerging democracy, but I can proudly say that we do not have autocratic regime. Uh, Armenian government is uh, appointed and chosen through elections, though I have uh, some criticism about our governmental system, but I am, and I am not fond of our current government, but as you see, I'm not speaking with you behind the jars. So I, I will go back to Armenia and will freely continue to criticize my government as I uh, usually do. So we are very proud of that. Of course, we try to develop our democracy because I uh, think that it's uh, one of the uh, major things for a new country, for an emerging country. And uh, unfortunately, our neighbors usually tend to go to uh, uh, limiting of the democratic values. For example, our neighboring Azerbaijan is a country which is uh, actually the family dictatorship where the post of the president uh, goes by heritage from father to son. So we don't have that thing in Armenia, and I am very proud of that. And it, it, I, what I hear you also saying is that it sounds like you have freedom of speech, yeah. and you're not afraid to to talk, and you're not afraid yeah. to uh, criticize. Or and and in light of all the problems that you you've expressed about Armenia facing, it sounds a little hopeful. At, at least in this country is is something that provides hope for you. Yes. Uh, yeah, the, uh, again, we have a lot of free speech and there are there is this democracy index. Uh, and I think Armenia is, again, ahead of many countries in Europe by the index of freedom speech. Of course, I would like to have more quality freedom of speech because uh, in the era of social media, criticism is usually... Uh, tweets in social media with only mm -hmm. 240 symbols and with uh, just a criticism uh, for criticism without any content. I would really like to have more professional media, but I think this that is a problem which occurs in all the countries now because of the social media. Yeah, that is uh, something that we're all encountering everywhere. Um, yeah. Now, tell tell me a little bit. What is your legal system like? Can you give me some description of what it's like, and maybe compare it to America and similarities yeah. Yeah. and differences? We are, which you Americans call civil law country. Uh, we have a civil code, and a major source of Armenian uh, law is a statute law, not precedent law, as in U.S. or United Kingdom. So basically. There are two major branches of legal systems. One is the Anglo-American or common law system. The other one is European or civil law system. So we have a separate civil code, which is uh, the major source of the regulation of civil actions. And it's, our civil code is designed in uh, taking as a uh taking as a so it is designed take it into account the german uh structure the, the structure of german code which is usually the lawyers called it call it pandex system so our civil code is pandex so by the structure it is more similar to german civil code the burglerische gesetzbuch but by the regulation by the content it is sometimes more closer to the French civil code. So again, we are a civil law country, and our civil code by the structure is similar to German one, but by the content is sometimes similar to the French civil code. Okay, and you, I mean, you're, you are, uh, your sponsor is a Supreme Court justice of the state of Hawaii. Do you have a, a Supreme Court or do you have court system? Uh, and, and, do, if a court rules a certain way, is that uh, a precedent that controls? Uh, yeah. Uh, so our precedent law, and generally in Europe, the precedents are not so powerful as in US. 
but they have some authority. We don't have a Supreme Court as US does because in majority of European countries, the constitutional justice is not conducted by the same court as, con as uh, conducts the, the, the general or the usual cases. So in Europe, you can find usually a separate constitutional court. So in Armenia, we also have the general jurisdiction, so the courts that deal with all issues related to relations with uh, private actor or private actors and the state. And there is a separate constitutional court which decide the, which deals with the issues of constitu of of uh, of um, uh, uh, laws and uh, deal and assess if the co corresponding law is in accordance with the constitution. So, if a judge dealing with the case finds that certain law contradicts con the constitution, the judge cannot apply the constitution directly. The judge must apply to the constitutional court and ask if the certain law contradicts the constitution or not. So this, this is the major difference that you can find not only in Armenia, but in all the countries uh, of Europe. Okay. And if I wanted to uh, sue somebody in a breach of contract, I could go to court in Armenia? Yes. To... yes. Oh, okay. Now, now you, you mentioned um, also the wine industry. I didn't I didn't know wine was a uh, a big thing in Armenia. Uh, that that's a is that a, a big business? Uh, it's a big and it's getting bigger. And actually, the oldest winery in the world, which is eight thousand years old, was found in Armenia. Wow! Yeah, yeah, the oldest winery, and we are proud of our wine industry. We have not only wine; we have also uh, cognac production or brandy production. So we have spirits made of wine and also wine, uh, spirits made of grapes and also wine. And I think Armenian wines are good and they are getting better. So we invite you to Armenia and we can have a glass of wine in Yerevan. Uh, that sounds like a, a good idea. Uh, I'd like to do that. Um, and is, is there a tourist industry in Armenia too? I mean, is that is that big? Not as big as in Hawaii, but it's getting bigger. So we have one and one million six hundred thousand tourists per year. Not as ten millions in Hawaii. <laughs> and and okay, we have a, just a couple minutes left. Is there? You've been here for a while. Uh, is there any? Do you see anything in, in Hawaii that reminds you of Armenia, or that we share any any feelings about that? Uh, I think it's. It's uh, unusual, but uh, some things are very similar. The thing that Hawaii is very small and Armenia is also very small, that means that personal connections are very uh, expensive here. The people are very nice, as in Armenia. They are, you are open-minded. And I, I think the uh, Hawaiians are very, very honest, very hospitable and very kind people i think i've never seen so kind uh, such a level of kindness in any state and in any country uh, uh i think that uh, in this case we have some similarities and one more thing armenia is a, a mountainous country and we do not have agricultural land and a lot of things are imported to armenia and that's the thing that economically unites Armenia and Hawaii. Well, I, you know, thank you for giving us a, uh, a, a start on discovery in, of Armenia. And as we closed out this session, uh, are there any, I mean, Armenia has gone through a lot of difficult times that you've, you've touched on, and it still is, still has some problems uh, that it deals with uh, daily. Uh, are there any words of wisdom or philosophy uh, in Armenian culture that you would like to leave us with? Uh, I don't know about, I can't remember anything specifically Armenian, but uh, I should say that if you work hard and believe that you can succeed, you will succeed. Okay, that's very good. Thank you very much. Arsen Tavadian, I appreciate you being our guest today and giving us a touch of Armenia. Aloha.
Hallo Hamma, hallo. <lacht> Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.